As long as we're not blocking traffic. Because that's the main thing. It's all about, in, in the eyes of the police, it's all about safety. That's the number one thing, is, is people's safety. Is safety. And when people go out to give, another issue we have is, is the homeless fighting over it. Um, getting in stabbings, uh, getting in fights. You know, I, I've been doing this for a while, and I, I haven't been called stabbed at all. Well, quite, quite the opposite. Um, while we're feeding, I, I see guys actually, if we're running low, will split their food among the other people in their community. Well, then you're, you're pretty fortunate the group uh, that you're serving in because a lot of places we get, we get stabbings, we get knocked down, knocked out of fights. Uh, people are still on their stuff after they, you know, all that stuff. So but we are criminals have, within any community, you know. Exactly. Um, we I don't, don't, I don't think it's any higher at We have to look at it at a bigger level. picture. We can't say this is a good group, this is a bad group. We have to keep the safety there as a bigger picture. Because heaven forbid, you know, you go down to go um, go do a good deed and then it backfires on you and someone ends up stabbing you because you didn't give them an extra pair of pants or something. Stuff like that's happened. I am, and going back from... Well, no, but I, I mean, I, I don't think that's an indication. I mean, you know, I can be walking down the, the street or going to a bar and I got the truck and stand. So I, I don't think the incident of crime among the homeless is Actually, any you know higher... Actually, how many workers we've had down in this area within the past two years? In which area? The downtown area? Yeah. Amongst the homeless or just amongst... Um, just the homeless. Now, what, what's the number of fair support? Now, how many murders have you had in the general population in that same area over the year or shooting the stand? In that area, none. None related to the homeless. No. You had you had no violent crime in that area? No, we've had violent crime, but it's usually been the homeless against the homeless. Not just some uh, pedestrian walking down the street and the homeless will jump through. It's like I said, it revolves right. So that there's no domestic battery. I mean, the, the difference is, I mean, attempted murder and murder, I mean, and what right. murder is like, the guy succeeded. I'm just, I'm just telling you that it, 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 there is violence. But there's, there's violence, violence across the board. Um, I've actually heard numbers, and the numbers aren't higher than the general population. And if you look at the overall numbers, well, then I don't know where you're getting your numbers. We do, that, we do our statistics, we have our own statistics whenever a call comes out, and we're constantly going down in those areas because of the fights, the stabbing, sexual assaults, um, and then, then the sales of narcotics. A lot of, a lot of them sell narcotics, they get high on spice, they get high on narcotics, and that's when the things come in. And then another issue, so we talked about the wet shelters as being a problem, um, the mental health, we need better mental health facilities, you know, to get some of these people in there. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then kind of going back to the giving project, um, we, we are providing a safe place for people to, to get, they can get, right now they get clothes, they get food, um, we even have some, we do it every second Saturday of the month from 10 to 12. No, it's just once a month. No, it's just once a month. Oh, once a month. Right now it's once a month because we're trying to build, we're trying to get, we've got like 10 uh, providers that come out and they donate their time. It's all, it's all free, it's all donations. Um, so we have to have good people that are willing to get the time to do that. We come out there on our, our day off. My squad works Tuesday through Friday, we come on a Saturday, so we can provide a safe environment. Um, we've got 60 people in housing since we started the program. Um, we've, on average, there's about 180 homeless that come to our event. And we're five, seven, four. So we're out there doing our part trying to, trying to help. And this is just Giving projects is just a kind of like a responsible way of giving with the security of having police there. So someone doesn't have to worry about a fight starting up in the line because or they ran out of stuff. How many times have you had this? You know, just too many people came and you just didn't have enough to give and then that one person didn't make anything's bad. Well, for the people that I know that they've never like I said, the people that I deal with is the community of homeless. Um will take and share. With them, the, 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 uh, you know, but it only takes I, I that one percent to hurt someone. Right, but that's any. I, you know, I work in the casinos, and I've seen guys get angry. But that, and that's that, But that, I mean, that's but like that's said, just human nature. Um, you know, to indicate that the homeless are more inclined to behave that way, I don't think it's an accurate representation. Um, from my personal experience, um, from other people that have been in the group longer than I have, and. Uh, 
have uh, read in today also have similar stories. Um, part of the problem, like when you were saying that there's a perception of the homeless uh, being violent, drug addict, um, mentally ill, you know, this is the kind of thing that, that uh, keeps that kind of stereotype going. Um, you know, so you have to be very careful. I mean, it, um, you know, like the statements are. Number one, it's a, two, it's a double edged sword because I can, we can go back and forth all day. Sure. And trust me, I'm on your side. I'm, I definitely I definitely want to. I see a lot of positive things. But the small, regardless if it's a big negative or a small negative, we can't have the negative. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm totally, I'm totally there on, on your side as far as like, you know, we have to change perception. You know, sure. there's a lot of good people in our events. Um, out of the, I don't know, I think we've had like 10, 11 of the giving projects. We've only had like three incidents where, you know, someone got in a fight and said, and that's with us there. Right. That we had to take someone to jail or we had a legal 2,000 of them because it was mentally there. They didn't know who they were. They didn't know what was going on. So we had a legal bill. You know, but still that small percentage. Now that's what the local police there. Now you don't have that police presence and then we have forbid someone get, you know, murdered or anything like like a, someone giving. Now the murders that happen are it was the homeless and the homeless. But it's just like any family. We live with someone long enough or you're in a tight small area long enough and they have differences and one day someone's gonna break down and go overboard. So we're definitely, I, I definitely see where you come from, and that's just the thing. You gotta get the word out there. You gotta, um, you know, make sure they're aware of all the the services that are, are provided. Make sure the public is aware of how we, how they can better off uh, help the homeless. Because when people go down to feed um, the homeless in those areas that don't want to go in the shelters, they're really just keeping them homeless because they don't have to go do anything. They everything brought to them, so they're not wanting to help themselves because they don't have to. No, I, I can't imagine anybody keeping it behind me. You need to come, you need to come, come, you need to come ride with me for a week to see. Well, no, just because somebody gives me a sandwich. I mean, it, it, you know. Uh, yeah, but you might just give them a sandwich, but two hours later, someone else gives them a sandwich. Two hours after that, someone gives them a blanket. So Four hours after that, someone gives them a, a sleeping bag. Two hours after that, they give them a tent. So you're saying that because these people give them the, the minimum basics for human survival, that that encourages them to stay. Um, so that that's because I can and gave you a sandwich every day and quit your job and the channel because that would be your outcome. No. Let, me, let me do it for a week and see if I can do a sandwich two times a day and sleep in bed with you. Well, you give up well the right, of anything well, else you have. Right now, that's, I have stuff. But if you don't have stuff, let's say you don't have anything, you're homeless. And I came and gave you a sandwich every day. Actually, I gave you three meals a day because some of these people get five meals a day. Um, they get four or five meals a day, and a lot of the shelters have free, uh, free uh, service halls for, for feeding, like uh, Catholic Charities at 10 o'clock, you get a free meal. So if I have nothing, and someone keeps coming up every day, give me food, give me clothes, give me a tent, give me uh, all this, all the there's no motivation. Basic survival. I'm telling you, there's no motivation to get off the streets, and they'll tell you that. It's like, why would I, why would I go anywhere? I, have, I don't have to worry about anything. I know I can go solicit and give me a beer because there are a lot of them talking about being an alcoholic. They can keep they can keep uh, their habit. You know, they're, they're so so come, come, with, with, come with me for a week and I'll show you. I, I, I do it twice a week. I do it twice a week. I do it every day, 40 hours a week. I'm telling you, a lot of these people are like, why would I want to go work? I get everything. I, I mean, just, it's counterintuitive. Um, just come with me for a week. And, well, and then there's the other issue. I mean, there's the moral issue. Um, you realize that um, for a lot of people, there's the, the religious aspect. Yeah, which that's is, a lot. That's, that deters some of them from going to the shelters. Well, no, no, I mean for the people giving. Um, for, um, you know, there's a couple of things where it's, you know, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. And it's a real thing. Um, but people who are religious that they should go out and help the homeless and feed the homeless uh, with no expectation. Um, as keeping them in shelter, you know, keeping them homeless because you can help them. Uh, I don't see it. There's always other, other line, underlying issues. It goes back to, remember I talked about um, we can't help those that don't want to help. Right. Right. Okay. 
a lot better than the, the, I mean, you, you can't guarantee anything, but the majority of the people that I deal with in the homeless quarter was, they're the ones that when we give them food, give them stuff, they're not going to get out of their situation because they're content and they don't have to worry about their responsibility. And they told me, I want to be homeless. I've had some, we've been homeless 20 years. He's like, I wouldn't change it. I've had numerous people tell me I wouldn't change being homeless. He's like, why? I don't have to work. I don't have no responsibility. You know, I get, uh, some of them, some of them, you kind of get disability money that you get in. I get enough money. If, if I do want to go into an apartment, I get to get the apartment. And then I come out here. But that majority so, is increasing. So if they're not doing anything outside of intentionally being homeless, what difference does that make? Yeah. Say what? If they're not doing anything outside of intentionally being homeless, what difference does that make? What are they it doesn't do anything. It, 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 like I said, it's not illegal to be homeless. Right. But whenever you're breaking the law and you're destroying other people's mm -hmm. property. But we're not talking about that. We're just talking about yeah, people that choose to be homeless. Yeah, they can be homeless. Mm -hmm. But you got to be homeless, you still have to have responsibility within society. You still have to obey the laws. You still have to have respect for other people's property. You can't go in a, a, a crap in, in a corner on someone's, other, on someone's property and have the species and all that build up. That's a hazard issue. Not only that, like but a city, a city issue to provide um, other cities. I mean, you're, you're aware. So if I come, if I come, in, if I come on your property and I use a restroom, that's a city's problem. Well, well, part of it is that uh, Circle Park they intent, they locked the bathrooms so that homeless people wouldn't be able to use them. That's when the park was closed. Right? No, no, it's right now. No, it's not. And of course, you know. And then and then they they uh, prosecute people for going to the bathroom in public. Once they've eliminated the public bathrooms. Well, there's other bathrooms besides those park bathrooms. I don't. I didn't know that they were locked up. But yeah, there actually isn't. And there's a, a Burger King close by that you can pay to use the bathroom. There's no public bathrooms anywhere near there. Yeah, it's kind of an odd situation. And most cities. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, I can't answer that. Though. I can't answer that. So that's above my pay grade. But that's something where you guys have to go to the city and ask them why they do that. Oh no, no. We want to tell you the answer, but I mean, we want to make you aware. So when you're going out and you see these behaviors, well, that, you know, you got to understand, of course nobody wants uh, somebody to come and shit on their lawn. However, as a society, I mean, we don't provide, uh, you know, public bathrooms or use, uh, restricted use, like, you know what, if you don't give me a dollar for a cup of coffee, I'm not going to use my bathroom. Uh, as a human, as a human, what would you tell somebody who doesn't have the resources and yet still has to use the bathroom? What do you expect them to do? Go to the shelter. I'll go to the shelter, and that's where some of them are. Listen, if they don't have the vehicle because they're poor. I'm in an area that doesn't have a shelter. I'm supposed to hold my towels until I can walk in that shelter. No, but you're not supposed to, you know, use it right in front of the school either. <laughs> you know, well, you know, where kids are. Or, if they gave like many cities for money, uh, shower facilities and, and public events. Like I mean, a lot of them are so private. You don't have to write it right down. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the reasons why they probably don't is just because the, the view that destroy the bathrooms and clog them up and do all that stuff, and that happens. We've got about 15 like, minutes left. We're in Catholic Charities. I was just over there the other day. I'll let you know. I just want to make sure we don't run out of time. Put a t shirt in the toilet and put a crap on all over the walls. You know, but that happens more, more than you think. Have you ever been a cop? And you've always been a cop? Like growing up, have you ever been to casinos? Uh, no, I've never been to Vegas, so I can't oh. I go to the casino. The same people that do the bathroom in the casino. The tourists and the people I do the same thing. I drove a truck for five wall, years, and I can tell you. I drove a truck for five years. I can tell you, public bathrooms are hideous. Yeah, they are. Yeah, it's not homeless people. Yeah, it's, it's everybody. People just have certain, yeah. And and the solution shouldn't be to lock the bathrooms so that they do that, you well, know, that, on the sidewalk well, next to it. It's my choice to do that. Mm -hmm. no. It's it's the uh, it's the people's choice or the the city's decision to do that. It's not my choice. The parks are the city owned. Metro doesn't. Right. Metro doesn't. Um, uh, 
that's not their jurisdiction, that's not our jurisdiction, that's the city marshals. So all those issues like that, you know, we oh, no, yeah, that's true too. Um, but like I wouldn't know where they're locked in. The only reason I'm just saying the only reason I can think that is maybe they're destroying the bathroom. Maybe they're maybe they gotta fix them. I don't know. Uh, specifically about mental health, or is the uh, crisis intervention team? Yeah, we got that. Uh, yeah. Oh, you already talked about that? Uh, yeah. Um, cool. So, did you have any other questions? I mean, because even on the, the homeless and the crisis, I think there were some other issues. I mean, well, yeah, we got other issues. Are you able to, to talk on other um, besides the homeless and the... I mean, yeah, I don't have a problem talking. Okay. Um, I encourage you guys to come to some of the meetings, though. I, I got like 12 minutes left. So yeah, I got it. Cool. So when it comes to, uh, you know, there are a lot of officers, like thousands recently, that weren't enforcing a lot of uh, uh, nonviolent or victimless crimes in you know, New York, NYPD. Uh, do you, I don't know, what would you say, in your opinion, was that, uh, like, was that wrong? Was there a mistake? I mean, there wasn't, there was no increase in crime uh, during that period when they weren't enforcing, they are saying like 88 to 94 percent of crimes and not writing many traffic tickets. I had like, no idea. You, Where was you don't that? know about New York? NYPD. So I, I'm not oh, familiar okay. with it. Oh, that's the protest against the mayor. All the officers in New York are in the back. The mayor of the city. Oh, you don't know about that. Because there's a that were shot. And that the police shooting actually called for a police stop and slow down. Oh, really? And not to do their job. Because they had to do their job. And the, you know, they thought they were scared. This isn't the first time New York is caught. And the actual consequence is that the family slowed down the police. Um, and if there was a police uprising, there was actually a And the city and the police weren't actively pursuing these minor uh, non-violent uh, quality of life crimes. You know, right into the city where you walk in, where there's like kind of really no victim. I mean, but that's, that's what you heard. I mean, if you look at the Metro as a whole, I think we do a pretty good job of the things that we do. And the only reason we enforce a lot of the uh, jaywalking and stuff like that because our fatality rate for uh, pedestrians and vehicles was skyrocketing, skyrocketing last year. Um, and, uh, um, I don't know the numbers. I could ask a traffic officer, but it was way too many. And you know that's something that uh, the sheriff pushed at that time is to you know to to kind of enforce those laws and more. Um, that's one reason why we got away with you know, handling a lot of the accidents, the minor accidents, so we can enforce some of the traffic, the traffic safety, um, like the crosswalks, making sure that the pedestrians are safe for going through there, you know, slowing the vehicles down. That's, that's where a lot of the fatalities happen, is because people get run over in a crosswalk, they're supposed to be safe. Hey, um, that was uh, Chef Clutch, right? You're talking about now. Well, I've got a question in relation to that about the saturation teams, which they've actually stated that that they're, what they do is they basically depend, descend upon a neighborhood, you know, seek out anybody they can find for any minor excuse to stop and search them and to ID them, and um, basically just harass everybody in the neighborhood because they've determined that this neighborhood is a high-risk neighborhood. So do you, and they've also specifically stated we would not do that in Summerlin. That was a quote in the newspaper by a Metro spokesperson. So do you think it's right to harass everybody within a neighborhood because a certain small percentage of people in that neighborhood might commit crimes? Well, I don't, I wouldn't use harass, first of all, but we do take crime statistics. If there is a spike in, in violent crimes, that's usually what, it, what we base it off. Violent crimes meaning uh, street robberies, uh, sexual assaults, um, like uh, assault battery with weapons or just, you know, like that when we get a spike like that, we do, that's where the saturation teams, they go in and they try to uh, make sure that if that is going on, they're going to stop talking to people and find out who's causing problems. Because a lot of times when that happens, when a spike, um, it's 
a lot of times she was called back to like narcotics uh, or gang involvement, stuff like that that increases um, the violence in that area. So when police go in there, that's what they're, they're focusing on, is trying to focus on the criminal element, whether it be a, uh, a gang, um, they got intel that a gang moved in the area and they're trying to take over the turf, or may it be uh, narcotics, uh, you know, intel that, hey, there's uh, drugs and drug dealers in the area and, that, and they're protecting their, their turf. That is what we try to do. It's not like, hey, we're going to win there and, you know, stop everyone or jaywalking. And, you know, well, they, they've actually said that that's the policy. Huh? They've actually said that's the policy. No policy. There is a policy. There's a stated policy. There's no policy saying that we're going to stop everyone. No, that, that was a Metro spokesman. They actually said that. Well, that that's know, what they do. I don't know what Metro person that was, but there's no policy saying hey, uh, you guys from here to here, you're going to stop everything for everything. That's not how we, that's not how we operate. We operate, we try to find a criminal element. Now, does jaywalking give me a problem cause to stop someone, to talk to them, to see if they belong in the neighborhood, to see if they are part of the problem? Yes. It's a, it's a how do you determine that? Yeah, right. who, how do you determine who belongs in a neighborhood? Yeah. That's kind By of talking to them. Okay, so what determines that they don't belong in a neighborhood? Right. And they tell you, hey, I don't live here. Yeah, but why would so you you're not allowed in neighborhoods you don't live in? No, I'm just, okay, stop. you guys are jumping to conclusions. Oh, no, I'm no, asking. That's, 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 that's a natural that's extension of what you're saying. You're saying no, listen, somebody to told you they don't live in a neighborhood, so they don't belong there. Listen to me real quick. If someone jaywalks, I'm in the area because they're increasing crime. Okay? Hey, we declared that this should, there's been an increase in crime here. All right, so um, we're going to patrol this area more. I'm driving around. I see someone uh, committing crime. I'm going to stop talking. Am I going to write a ticket, take him to jail right away? No. My goal is to find out what the problem is. What, what's the issue? Is this person part of the problem? So I stop him. I have the right to stop him because he broke the law. Okay, now there, that's when I, I can interrogate him. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm driving through. That's how we do things. So you don't have a stop and frisk policy? No, no, no. No. That, that's like old school. Like, you know, way back in the day when they first started policing, policing has changed a lot. It really has. You know what I'm saying? We really are out there. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of laws. There's a lot of rights that people have. We can't just go and stop anyone. Okay? People have the right to walk down the, the sidewalk, regardless who they are. Okay? It's my job to figure out if they're about to commit a crime or committed a crime. You know, in that area. So if I can stop someone by breaking a small crime to stop and talk to them and, and, and question them and make them feel uncomfortable. As far as like, okay, so you don't live here. Well, then what are you doing? Well, um, I'm visiting a friend. What's your friend's name? Uh, you know, stuff like that. We're not, we don't, we're not trying to get him up to get, you know, just Joe Citizen walking through a neighborhood. Does that make sense? Or, oh, I hear what you said. Um, I mean, I mean, because I know you seen more of the, um, uh, like well, I, I seem like a person that has lived in minority neighborhoods and seen yeah. minorities stop for no reason whatsoever. So, but that's yeah. not true. That you is don't true. Just stop, you yeah. don't just stop everyone. Maybe back in the day when you were growing up. Maybe a year ago. Is it, uh, well, no, it's a policy. Well, you, what's your de definition of minority then? I, I mean, there's a lot of definitions of minorities. What's your definition? People of color is, is a huge definition of it. And what's yours though? I just said it. You know, people of color are a minority. There's different. There's different uh, ethnicities within that that group. But I've lived in Latino neighborhoods. I've lived in black neighborhoods. I've lived in poor white neighborhoods. So you're saying we live in those neighborhoods? You never got stopped? Well, I am saying that I have been stopped in poor white neighborhoods. Yes. Okay, no, I'm talking about the, na the Hispanic neighborhoods. When you were going through there, you never got stopped. Generally, no. What were you doing? Like I lived there. Okay. So. And a lot of the people so, that I saw. I mean, so if there's majority Hispanic, so if you stop someone, the odds are they're going to be Hispanic, right? No. So how can you say well, that's not, I'm not. 
basing it on, you stop the Hispanic person, I'm basing it on, I've seen cops drive up when a person is just simply walking down the street, stop and question somebody. Question them or just talk to them? Because I'll, I'll stop and talk to anyone. They well, they if they know their rights, then they know that they can t they can ask whether they're being detained, but a lot of people don't actually oh, know their good, rights. Good. You know what? This is a good time. All right. Now, you're familiar. Now, are you familiar with these fires that are given out? Uh, Where'd you get this? Oh, I hand them out. Oh, you do? I've never I, seen it. Is there anything on there that you would find objectionable? I'm that type. What do you mean? Any of the policies that we find when we're dealing with uh, forming citizens of their rights, when, when dealing with the police. Uh, I mean, this is actually brought up on, uh, I tell you. Oh, uh, you need to go? Um, yeah, if you want to use that, it might be easier. Yeah, you can use that about three minutes. Now, where did they, they was it So, show? yeah, I mean, is there anything on there that you would disagree with or, or have an issue with? I don't have an opinion. I can't give my opinion. Well, these are, these are policies for citizens dealing with the cops. I mean, you know, would you say that any of these are, you know, are detrimental to... Well, everyone has their rights. Right. So, I mean, everyone has their, their, their rights. It's their, it's their, their duty to, you know... Well, so you're you're familiar with laws, right? Obviously. So, I mean, do you see anything inconsistent with the laws on there? I mean, do you see any errors in what's written there? I just had to maybe give it a second to read it and then. Yeah, it's small print. <laughs> we're, we're not working with quite the budget that Metro has. <laughs> so, what organization are you guys with? Nevada Cop Block. Are you familiar with us? I, I've heard of you. Now, have you heard of us um, in a positive way or a negative way? Um, I would say kind of neutral. Some, I mean, some of the things that you guys bring out, I think you're just trying to um, uh, promote people's rights or make them understand their, their rights, and we have no problem with that. Everyone has, everyone needs to know their rights. Um, so, it make everybody's job a lot easier, I would imagine. Um, we're, we're dealing with. We're dealing with a small percentage of people that, first of all, they don't care about society because they don't care about the other person. Uh, that's why you know they commit you know, horrendous crimes against other people um, for one reason or another. But I, I mean, that's I mean, what? this comes way after. I mean, um, um, when everybody's I mean, you're presumed innocent, proven guilty. So even when you make an arrest, you know, it, it still has to go before somebody can make a determination. Um, so, I mean, that, that will be determined by juries and, and judges, but in the initial stop, and 